came to Rutherford County for the first time nearly five years ago. I drove up from Atlanta, passing by signs for the Overmountain Victory Trail, and saw the majestic Cliffside Elementary School on my left as I turned towards Ellenberg. What I didn't see on this initial drive, but would come to know intimately through others' memories, were the remnants of Cliffside Mill and dozens of other textile mills throughout Rutherford County. I learned that Rutherford County had been a quintessential New South community, capitalizing on its abundant natural resources, location, and cheap labor to revitalize an area devastated during the Civil War. Soon, nearly everyone in the county was touched by the textile industry, either by growing cotton, spinning it, or providing goods and services to the mill hands. Young people had new educational opportunities at schools like the one in Cliffside, which was built by mill tycoon and Rutherford County native R.R. Haynes. Haynes's son sold the family business to his partner, Mr. Cone, who created the Cone Mills empire. I was blessed to meet Miss Price Bennings, the daughter of the first black man to work for Cone Mills by unloading cotton bales. He was hired in 1936. African Americans, though, were excluded from nearly all positions in the mills throughout the southern Piedmont until the late 1960s and often even later. The average mill worker earned much less than the national average and was exposed to deadly dust. In good ways and bad, Rutherford County had become synonymous with the mills. Meanwhile, local newspapers, which had been printed in the county since shortly before the Civil War, were recording this history and telling the story of Rutherford County to its people. Newspapers, economics, culture, and politics. These are the key ingredients that have shaped Rutherford County's stories. Gradually, and then all at once, the mills shut down. In one 48-hour period, stonecutter mills and cone mills moved their operations abroad, leaving 2,000 people instantly unemployed in the county of about 60,000. In Spindale, a town created specifically for mill workers and reliant upon support from textile companies for public services, community members had to rally together and raise funds just to keep the town pool open for the summer. The thing that had given Rutherford County its identity throughout the 20th century had all but disappeared. As local residents seek to sustain their community in a new era, they must decide for themselves what Rutherford County means to them and what they want to see there in the future. To do so, they have to look at the history that brought us to the present. Since the early 2000s, Rutherford County has been dramatically changing. The Burlington Textile Mill just outside Forest City was torn down and replaced with a $450 million Facebook data center. A bustling flea market, complete with a church, barbershop, restaurant, and fresh produce, began operating on weekends inside a previously abandoned mill. The local isothermal community college has begun training students for high-tech careers, such as those offered by Facebook. But unfortunately, no single new employer is likely to provide even a fraction of the jobs that one mill used to provide. Some storefronts have reopened, but for many, the unfathomable tragedy of economic collapse is still a reality. Do young people envision themselves staying here? What versions of Rutherford County's story are journalists and citizens telling? And will the question of community identity after textiles be an opportunity to assess Rutherford County's past, present, and future? Follow me to the Rutherford Thread, an online documentary and public forum, to search for some answers to these questions together. See you there.